Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the first full day of DEF CON. Yeah. Yeah. This is the uh, fifth annual uh, fail panel. Uh, and momentarily, there will be waffles. Uh, if you have a waffle, we do request that you please flip off whoever that was right over there. Uh, just under general principle. Um, we are requesting donations. Uh, the, the funds will be split between the EFF and cancer research and we'll go more into the cancer aspect later, uh, sadly. Um, that's a whole other set of fail that's not actually funny, sadly. Um, I'm David Mortman. We have our, my illustrious panelists and our assistants on stage to uh, make a hopeful afternoon of fun and merriment. And uh, the way this pretty much goes is we, we make fun of industry, we make fun of each other, we make fun of you. It's all for a good time. Are you about to say something, Rich? No. No. My personal fail right there. Okay. So I'm going to start off with the, with the least part, with the, with the least funny part, and then we'll get to the really funny stuff. Uh, and that is that, uh, so at uh, Field Panel 2, I made a big deal about the fact that there's a, way too much sexism in this industry, and sadly that's not funny. Um, and this year there's been a tremendous, tremendous amount of stupid sexism going on in this industry. I'm not going to name names for the most part, because really, <clears throat> that will be, that, that, but I'm going to make two exceptions because they're so recent. Uh, one is the uh, lovely folks at RSA decided that really it was necessary to bring span, uh, scantily clad booth babes to Black Hat. Um, and frankly, I just have to take a quick survey. Um, who decides what to, how to purchase their software? Do they base it on features, functionality, or the size of breasts? Breasts! Breasts! breasts. Fuck you. <laughs> Man breast. A good D cup will get me to buy anything. We, we will get to that. <laughs> so the other, the other special one, which I just have to uh, thank uh, Imperva for throwing out this out at the last minute, was they decided they were going to post a, a top ten list of pickup lines for Black Hat. Um, and it, it's embarrassing on many levels, including the fact that they're not even remotely funny. Uh, and or good, or accurate. Um, it was best summed up by a friend who called this a top ten ways of to never get laid at Black Hat. <laughs> I actually thought that Imperva had gotten owned, and this was a, a, like a baggy pants thing. I thought it was hilarious. Oh. It, they did get owned. Sadly, it was by their own employee, thus proving that you do need to worry about the insider. <laughs> so. If only they had the LP. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. What's the D in DLP for? <laughs> so, uh, wait. First of all, are there children present? Are there any children? Are there people who act? Wait, like are there people present? under the age of eighteen? Dave's looking for a date. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm. I'm just trying to make sure I don't have to cuddle with Rich later in uh, the Las Vegas jail. You never cuddle. He, he never calls. I just he, wanted to be held. <laughs> yeah. So we, we, just, we decided, uh, Jack Daniel had the brilliant idea and we decided to support him in this, that, you know, if you're going to, you know, the way we, we have to do this right, if we're going to, if we're going to, you know, really be out here as an industry saying fuck you to women, we need to launch a new company. <laughs> Misogyny Networks. Hold on a second. Because if, if you're going to do it, you should be honest. <laughs> Our ports are always... Because <laughs> our ports are always in promiscuous mode. <laughs> hey. I don't know. They didn't give me one. <laughs> we gave you the pong. <laughs> he was last man standing. He's the interface that gets plumbed. <laughs> we didn't have any children sizes. <laughs> <laughs> How about gnome sizes? <laughs> <laughs> I have black cards for all of you. Actually, there was a computer motive for that. It kept his oh, yeah, pants we, on this. We have no pants. <laughs> all I know is that Larry's wearing long sleeves. So, uh, <laughs> where does the shirt end and where does the sleeve start? We we wonder about that often with you, Larry. So, who's next, by the way? Uh, who who is volunteering to uh, follow up this illustrious move? Larry. Larry. Yeah, Larry's next. That cable guy. <laughs> Obviously, you've never seen him naked. You know. Uh, okay. Either way. Oh, yes. Okay. I keep forgetting about that. There's a. Yeah. I keep forgetting about that. 
All right, please bear with me for one second here. I need power badly. Is this called foreshadowing? Yes. <laughs> You're all right. That was Umbop by Hanson. What are you, a fucking mime? You wouldn't remember that, Gillis, because that was before you were born. Oh. Okay, now we're good. We're good. <laughs> there we go. Ooh, beer. Necessity for the presentation. All right. So welcome to uh, fail panel five. Put that there. Don't spill it on my laptop. Okay. And ooh, the sound of waffles. All right, so V for Vendetta. All right, my name is Larry Pesci. Um, I'm a senior security consultant with NWN Corporation. Uh, spent a long time in healthcare. Uh, did a lot of penetration testing, all that type of stuff nowadays. Um, authored a couple books with Singris and the co-host of Polycom Security Weekly. You don't care about that crap because, well, we're not here to talk about me. Um, I was er wearing earlier my Cancer Sucks t-shirt. Hey, cancer sucks. Thank you very much. Um, not funny, but don't worry, we're going to not harsh your buzz. Um, this year we lost a very close family friend to pancreatic cancer. Um, and as you well know, we've lost a couple of other folks uh, this year, most notably recently uh, Sally Ride and uh, Steve Jobs, you know, whether you love them, hate them, whichever. Uh, but pancreatic cancer is a really big deal, uh, and it's uh, very underfunded for, uh, from government for research. Um, so go over to pancan.org and, and offer your support if that's what you're into. And uh, no more downers. Let's go have some fun. <clears throat> All right, so I've spent the last two years, uh, quote, in the trenches doing penetration testing, uh, vulnerability assessments, uh, physical assessments, all sorts of uh, good stuff. Uh, definitely related to my interests. So I thought about what am I going to do for the fail panel? I haven't done any research. Where did I find the fail? Okay, so I remember this quote from Marcus Ranum, and you notice the little brackets around the quote. And basically the quote is summarized as, as an industry, security industry, we have everything we need to secure our systems, but we're just too damn lazy to do it. Okay, um, from Marcus Ranum. And uh, well, the first fail is, I can't find the goddamn quote anywhere. <laughs> have you heard of Google? Yes, and I don't even really know what the quote is, so that's why it's summarized in brackets. But Marcus Random has this thought that, yeah, we have everything we need in the industry to secure our systems. We're just too damn lazy to do it. And I thought, well, all right, yeah. So I go do pen testing and all this type of stuff, and well, spend two years, and in two years, there's one customer that I haven't been able to break into. Okay, that's interesting. All right, so I'm going to challenge Marcus to a duel. Okay. Do we really have all we need, or are we just really uh, too lazy to, to do it? Uh, I'd argue maybe a little bit otherwise. And I'm going to show you some examples of some of the things that I've seen over the last couple years um, that really make me question why. Okay. So fail number two, challenging Marcus Random. Okay. Yeah, maybe not such a good idea. Okay. So ultra well, super not? happy fun ball does not meet expectations. Hopefully this panel will. So first we need to get in, right? Okay. <coughs> Fail. All right, so before we can start doing the test, we need to get into the facility. Don't drop the soap. Okay, so step one. Let's say this is the door to your office, your corporate office, uh, that you've used the shared entrance for the multi-tenant facility with no guard at the elevator, and you come off the elevator, and here's the front door to the office. For a bank. Corporate headquarters. 
that's a bank. That's a bank corporate headquarters. Yeah, lots of glass on the front door. Um, lots of nice padlocks from Home Depot, Schlage, thank you very much. Uh, lots of glass. Uh, there were no obvious cameras or alarms that I could see, so that one was really easy for us. By the way, these are all stuff from actual customers that I've been on in the last two years. Um, yeah, they don't know I'm telling you this stuff, but now if you can figure out who it is, it'll it, be a different story. Only it weren't re being recorded. It's okay. I don't mention any names. <laughs> nice. Uh, so it's almost as bad as our uh, security guard asleep here on the couch, and this one actually was not from the same bank, but it is also, ironically, from a bank. Okay. All right. So we all know about tailgating, right? You wait for someone by the door, they open it up, and then you follow them in, right? Great. So we sit in the parking lot and uh, doing a physical assessment, sit in the parking lot, uh, do the, uh, you know, observe folks' badges so they know what they look like, spend about an hour, you know, looking at the door, observe patterns, you name it. And then we run into craft time because I don't have a badge. So I need to make one. So I sit in my truck with my Leatherman and a uh, CCDC piece of paper that I flip over and had stolen my daughter's box of 64 Crayola crayons earlier and uh, create a badge um, that looks really bad out of crayons and paper. <laughs> Enter craft time. Yes, so fail number four. Uh, this works really great for aerospace contractors and I spent an hour in the facility with this badge uh, after tailgating through the door. And uh, the only reason I got caught after an hour is I had entered a restricted manufacturing area and I didn't have safety glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> so it turns out it even gets a little bit better because the first time I tried to tailgate someone in, I got denied. And I turned around and went back to my truck and waited another 20 minutes for someone else to come in. The first time I got denied, I was almost three hours from home. Uh, so it was a road trip for me for the day. And the first person I tried to tailgate recognized me. <laughs> <clears throat> Turns out, just down the street from our house, less than a two-minute drive, there's this little Greasy Spoon family-owned restaurant where we go to breakfast every Sunday. And, well, it's like four tables, and, well, I have a unique appearance, and our daughter practically runs the place. She goes behind the counter and takes orders, and she's four, so everybody recognizes her. And I show up, and who do I freaking try to tailgate into this office? some woman that also goes to Little Greasy Spoon three hours away every Sunday for breakfast. <laughs> what luck. You know, I, I, I'm, I know that story's bullshit. They, they recognized you because you were wearing assless chaps, right? Well, <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> All right. So also with this same uh, aerospace contractor um, manufacturing, uh, we had a 130% success rate on a social engineering attack that we did. Yes, I, 130%. I don't know if we can do math or not. I can. Right. So yeah, you send them an email, okay? Um, send them an email with a link to a website. Say, hey, yeah, we have a, uh, um, an audit that we've just performed. We need to increase our password complexity requirements. Um, standard text email. Here's a link. Go to this website, put in your username and password, and we'll tell you whether you're going to need your change your password to meet the new password complexity requirements. <laughs> Look, next. 100, 130% success rate, you say? Yes. They tried it more than once. <laughs> so let's coin a new term now yeah. and call it enthusiastically fished. Yes. <laughs> as, as Jaded would say, stop clicking shit. Premature <coughs> fistulation. What's that? Premature fistulation? Pre no. No. No, there was nothing premature about it. Uh, so in any case, the website that they go to is really bad. We steal their logo off of their website. And the, uh, the HTML formatting is all like web.5. Um, so about the only thing that's missing is the blink tag. It's really bad. Uh, and no and the matter... Blink the blink tag is coming back in HTML5. I know. Good. I'm excited. <coughs> so no matter what they put into the form, it says, you're great, no problem, thanks, and then we go use it for all sorts of other stuff. Um, the site looks really bad, and I want to show you what it looked like, but I forgot to get it, and it requires some setup. Fail. So fail. So instead, I'll offer you a consolation prize. So first up uh, is this fine gentleman, Chris John Riley, in Columbia, dancing with a woman. He's apparently a wingman. He looks just like that guy right there. 
Yeah, right there. So uh, Chris John Riley is playing wingman to distract this very, uh, very nice woman uh, away from uh, James Arlen, <laughs> who has apparently decided to uh, dance with what, what appears to be a very, well, young woman. All right. So, uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean, James, it's Columbia. I mean, it, in it, defense, <laughs> I think you have bigger boobs than her. <laughs> I, 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 I noticed that I still have the shirt on and somebody covered up out of modesty. Uh, so, here's the thing they brought in these championship dancers <laughs> to show us how to do this stuff, and they danced shirts. for about an hour on stage, and then they started teaching us. You see what happens when you get a bunch of information security people and try to teach them how to dance? <laughs> Fail. It did not turn out well. I would like to point out, though, as one of the um, elders in that group, uh, and the not grabby type of human being, um, we ended up having to dance a whole hell of a lot because some of the other speakers that went to Columbia were all hands. <laughs> Chris. Like this guy? Perhaps. 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 All right. So moving right along. Great. So we're in. We, you know, we've got access to the facility, right? So, so what happens from there? So normally when we start looking at assessments, we worry about shared use networking closets. Okay? And, well, this is maybe not the shared use that we always see. Usually they're sharing network closets with uh, the phone guys or some storage or um, power and all that type of stuff. And, well, that's one of the things that we call out on some audits because we don't like to see that. However, on this one, we saw something very interesting. This is a shared use uh, network closet that was shared with the pharmacy. <laughs> and you'll notice on the right hand side there's a set of metal shelves and there's some blue bins on the metal shelves. Yes, atropine. Speaking of atropine, uh, the default toppings on the waffles are going to be chocolate syrup, whipped cream, sprinkles, peanut butter, Reese's, bits. And atropine. And, uh, and or syrup and or strawberry and we don't have any forks. Are you using the... I'm not quite sure why we would need them. Huh? You came to the right place for that. All right, so moving right along. Yes, absolutely. Drugs in the network closet. Awesome. Normally we worry about other stuff being in there and folks accessing that. No, we were concerned about the network folks accessing the drugs. <laughs> you also note in the back, there's a dumbwaiter. There's more than one way in this room, one of them without a lock. You have to be really small, however. Needless to say, I couldn't fit. Do you think we could get rich in there? I think we'd probably not. Have you ever seen an atropine overdose? It's, well, yeah. Well, all right, you have. Yeah. <laughs> Not, yeah. not yet. Not yet. The day's young. Don't, don't try the waffles. No, I mean it's okay. It's okay. All right. So I, I've always made some jokes about, well, we've got some other ways in, right? Well, you go and put wireless in your environment, and, well, wireless is like running Ethernet to the parking lot. Well, what happens when you really run Ethernet to the freaking <laughs> parking lot? You win, of course. <laughs> You look, win, of course. Look, look yes. here's the problem. We as security experts keep telling people over and over again, don't use wireless, it's insecure. And when somebody comes up with a solution that's not wireless, you pick on them. Yeah. What's up with that? So, yes, there, there's definitely a need for uh, running uh, wire to your parking lot, Ethernet to your parking lot. Uh, for example, in, in this particular example and the other one that I saw, um, you have uh, radiology and CT trailers. This equipment's really expensive for hospitals to buy. So they rent or lease it. It comes in like a motorhome, and they park this motorhome at a loading dock. And of course, these images that you're taking with this stuff are really large. Uh, on the uh, uh, each study is a somewhere between one and seven gigs, and doing that over wireless is nightmare. So they either use a one or ten gig uh, wired connection to the trailer and power and all that stuff. Um, so you've got to have wired Ethernet to your parking lot. But why do you need to patch them down when they're not in use? Okay problem. Uh, the first time we did this and found one of these boxes, it wasn't locked. The problem is, is that box was directly across the street from the police substation. So I'm sitting there trying to break into someone's network surrounded by cop cars. I was, needless to say, Just a little like nervous. Just like your prom night. Just like my prom night, yes. Yes. But Dave, I was trying to break into your place. 
I was trying to break into your box. Ooh. So speaking of breaking into boxes, note that this Ethernet jack is placed inside of this uber secure, nice, high tensile strength plastic box. Well, we don't want to break our customer stuff. You know, we probably could have dealt with this with a nice swift kick. Um, instead, we spent 60, more or minute, 60 minutes or more trying to pick the damn lock right by the employee entrance <laughs> at lunchtime <laughs> without badges. Looking very similar to this. We got a couple of interruptions, mostly on the, the line of um, we used uh, Jason Street's ultimate social engineering when you're someplace when you're not supposed to. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> doing good, thanks. And they keep walking. Did not a single question. Did anyone offer to help? Uh, no, no one offered to help. Uh, they felt that we were struggling enough, apparently. Uh, <laughs> We never did get the lock open. It was a little rusty on the inside. It had been exposed to the elements for quite some time. Look, I, do, uh, do I really even need to say anything on that one? Fail. 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 But it gets worse, it, it, or better, because we didn't even need to open the lock because you just take the plastic pin out of the hinge. <laughs> so wait a minute. You, you spent 60 minutes picking a lock? Fail. Fail. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we spent 60 minutes trying to pick the lock, and then after about an hour, realized you just pulled the pin out. and It came right out. Weatherman, pull it right up, done. And then you use the lock as the hinge. Um, yes, and the jacks were all punched down, and uh, you notice that there's some black bars on there. Uh, yes, all the telephone numbers for the phone jacks were all labeled nicely, and it even had the uh, IDF and port number labeled uh, on the outside of the box, so we knew right where it was going. Thank you very much. All right, so yeah, how about real wireless instead of the fake ethernet kind? Uh, yep, we did some work for a facility, uh, showed up at the facility, um, sat in their lobby at midnight, and cracked their WEP network in three minutes. Yes, WEP. And so when confronted with it the next morning when I showed, uh, was at the client site to, to do rest of the on-site work, um, said, hey, by the way, you might want to fix this. Oh, well, how do we do that? Well, let's go log into your single Cisco access point and I'll help you. Oh, but we only use this for executives when they have a meeting in the meeting room next door. <laughs> Uptime. Eight months, 28 days, and six hours. That's a really long meeting. <laughs> so turns out we changed it over to uh, WPA2 pre-shared key. was the best that they could do with the equipment that they had uh, and do it right there. And they have one access point in this facility. It was web, and we found it, and we broke into it. And now we're going to help them fix it the best way they can and not five minutes goes by and one of the executives comes over with their iPad and said, I can't get on the internet anymore with my iPad. They don't support iPads. Yep, so, okay, the fail number eight, I guess, seven A. All right, so this one was lots of fun. Okay, fucking win on this one. All right, so SSH. Uh, doing some uh, assessment for a customer, find that they have SSH um, available to the internet. Uh, we're able to determine that when you SSH to this box, you're actually SSHing through their firewall right to their core switch. <laughs> cool, right? Fucking win. Okay. So the problem is it's uh, SSH password only, no certificates, all that good stuff. They actually used a halfway decent password. Okay. We tried some uh, password brute forcing against it. It didn't work. Um, so we finished looking at the port scan results and found that HTTP was open on the box unauthenticated, and you navigate to the IP forward slash level 15, and sure enough, you have level 15 web interface access to the box. Yeah. Yes. Now you go and create a user, and now you've got SSH access. So we use that to set up a GRE tunnel from their internal core switch uh, to a switch that we had in our office, and we turned the external pen test into an internal pen test in my jammies. <laughs> I didn't even need to get out of my pajamas. You okay. don't wear pajamas. I know. So thank you, Internet. Welcome Jack Daniel to public transportation. He'll be your guide. Okay. It's not really Jack, but yeah, I like to think it is. That's at least how I, that's how I think of him in my dreams anyways. All right, so the biggest fail of all. Anonymous. Boy, that got really quiet all of a sudden. <laughs> Oh, no, wait, I'm sorry. Uh, anonymous FTP. Sorry, my bad. My bad. Yeah. 
So uh, we were doing some work with a Fortune 1000 company, discovered that they had an FTP server accessible from the internet. Sure enough, anonymous FTP. And they've got directory listing turned on and all that good stuff. So we start poking through and we get about three levels deep and we find a backup directory and then there's a bunch of stuff in the backup directory. And sure enough, uh, they make a bunch of stuff and in that one of the backup directories for engineering included all of their intellectual property, all of their product formulary and all of the procedures on how to put the stuff together. Winning. Yeah. So now wait, let me, you're, you're against backups now. <laughs> uh, oh no, 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 I like backups. It's for later. It's for, good <laughs> it's for later. <laughs> so says your mother. Okay. All right, so fail number nine. All right. So MSL 8067, when I see this, I don't even have to pop the box and I start my ponage dance, right? Okay. So how many of you guys have a ponage dance? So when you pop a box, you do a ponage dance? All right, I have a request. Stand up and let's see it. Huh. Come on, come on. I think there, there might be beer or waffles in it for you. Nice. All right. So you've got your ponage dance down, right? If you don't have one, you need to start practicing and find one. Okay? Because it's the only way some of us schlubs get exercise. Okay. Hey. Yeah, so we go on an internal assessment and uh, these folks have got about 475 internal hosts. And this is the result. Number two critical from Nessus is 122 hosts uh, vulnerable to 08067. So 100, 120 ponage dances later. <sighs> and if we start looking a little bit more at this, um, there's a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, 470 out of 475 or so internal clients um, with uh, MS12020, the RDP vulnerability for blue screen of death. Yeah, they had a really bad day in the office. <laughs> okay, so fail number 11. MS03039 was in that list. Yes, but I was already tired from already having to do it 120 times. Okay. Of course. But I'm tired after all that dancing. All right, so fail number 11. Yeah, do we really have all the patches we need? Yeah, maybe not so much. All right, so I, I'm after seeing all of this crap, and this is just some of the few examples that we've seen over the last couple of years, um, I'm thoroughly convinced that this is what happens in most IT shops, okay? And this is sort of an audio video one, so bear with me a second here. Do you think I've watched that a couple of times? <laughs> By the way, this goes on for 10 minutes. <laughs> Can you survive? Yeah, go, go to YouTube and search uh, Afro Circus, and there's a 10 minute video of this. There's a loop for 12 hours. By, by the way, uh, four and a half year olds are invincible to this. <laughs> Maynard searches for Afro Circus, but for other reasons. Yes. Da 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 Afro Circus. Da 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 Afro Circus. Afro Circus. Polka dot, polka dot, polka dot, Afro. Uh, I know, I know. Fail. Fail. In any case, uh, I, I do hope I've finally been able to do plant an earwig so that uh, I, I really hope you enjoy singing that for the rest of DEF CON 20. <laughs> Circus, Afro Circus, Afro Circus, Polka Dot, Polka Dot, Polka Dot, Afro. My daughter will be so happy. Okay. I did it. Want to see my ponies dance? Yeah. That's it.
了。<laughs> yes, And because it's very, very similar to the trouble shuffle. So yes, thank you very much. Um, hit you in the bushes if you you have questions, comments. Loads of fun. Um, enjoy some waffles and some beer. And I will turn it over to uh, to the to the rest of the panel to have some fun. And, and thank you very much. That just keeps going through my mind. I can't even think now. Oh, God. <laughs> it's hypnotizing. The zebra doesn't have a penis. Kill it with fire! Where, where's the penis? You two. Where's the penis at? Where do, where's the penis at? You hear that a lot, don't you? Yes, yes, you are. Yes. Good Lord, back fat. Remember, EFF Ross gets his shots. I mean, I, I've got nothing to complain about, but it's just unexpected. <laughs> this? I don't know Max so well. How we get the screen to go? <laughs> So here's my first fail. I actually run Windows most of the time on my MacBook, so I don't actually know how to make Mac OS show up. <laughs> yeah. So, as we're trying to raise money, I want you to think about one thing. How much would you pay to not get a lap dance from the girls of misogyny networks? I accidentally all the money. Apparently ball jokes are not popular here. It, it's interesting. I think there's only one qualified lap dancer on the stage at this point. Uh, Mor Mortman, are you wearing lipstick? <clears throat> Absolutely. Okay. I, I was wondering why you look so good. He also has that silky smooth hair. Oh, yes. You kind of just want to pet him. <laughs> Something goes. If you squint, he looks like he has a makeup. <coughs> not like James over here with the C's. You know, I hate to say it, but I actually feel kind of pretty right now. <laughs> okay, so... There you go. It rubs the waffles on the skin. <laughs> I'll do this. Rob Graham, everybody. He got his slide deck up. So, by the way, I keep seeing this, this hot chick out of the corner of my eye with long hair and a pink shirt. And then I keep looking over. <laughs> and it's Jack. <laughs> There's something wrong with peripheral vision. <laughs> so my talk is about uh, security terminology. We work in an industry where we think about security. And we use phrases like, well, I need to secure this system, or I need, like, the, the random quote is, we have the stuff to secure our systems. 
but we really don't. There's no such thing as perfect security. Uh, even if you do everything the best, Random also has this other quote about the only perfectly secure computer is one where you cut the wires and he shows these nice little scissors. And even then it's probably not secure enough. You need to turn it off. You need to bury it. And even then it's probably not secure enough and so you need to like destroy it. So I think we're coming about this from the wrong way. And the way we should be talking about security is not use that word. We should use the word fail. So that's what my talk is about, is thinking about this from the other point of view, of fail. Thank God you're on a panel about fail. <laughs> yeah, thank God. <laughs> Just so happens by luck, that's what we're talking about today. So we have terms like advanced persistent threat. <laughs> so, <laughs> five second rule. So we should be talking about advanced persistent fail. Like we look at the RSA hack or the Google Aurora hacks and how did they happen? Well, phishing attacks, SQL injection, or fail. So here's how we look at security. We think that, you know, this is a picture from soccer and there's players out there who are standing in front hoping that th their balls don't get hit. So they put their hands in front of the balls. And it's a good strategy and so forth and stuff, but this is how security really works. <laughs> and the thing is, is both the attackers and the defenders are, are subjective to, subjected to the same sort of chaos. Neither side really knows what's quite happening. When you do a pen test, you don't come in with a certain plan of saying I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. You sort of say, what's happening? Oh, I find Ethernet out to the parking lot. You know, it's a chaotic sort of a response to a chaotic situation. So instead of talking about things like worst practices, we need to think from the point of view of the fail industry. And that is avoid worst practices. Or we all, we all know this word EPEEN. It comes from gaming and, and so on. But from the fail perspective, we need to have the F-peen, the fail penis. Wait, what? <laughs> Dave doesn't have a problem with that. Yeah, D Dave's got a good example of that. <laughs> Mine does nothing of the sort. And the fail penis is we're not measuring how big your security E-peen is. We're not measuring how well you do encryption. And this is kind of a funny thing is, is that you, you talk to a corporation that's got a recent security breach. And because of SQL injection or phishing or bad passwords or something. And they always have, their spokesmen come on and they always have the same description of, well, yeah, we might have had SQL injection, but we have military grade encryption. As if somehow this makes up for their fail. And they can spend, like, they can spend a billion dollars on security, but if you have SQL injection, you have fail. And that's what happened like to the Sony breaches and the anonymous breaches. These were kids out there having fun attacking large corporations that in theory spent a lot of security who just happened to have a very small E penis. Wait, what are you saying? No or F penis. <laughs> you know E peen, right? No. no, apparently I don't. What? <laughs> Fail. Is that electronic penis? Electronic penis. So it comes from the gaming world um, where you have gamers who are trying to show how impressive they are and how big they are. Or from the hacker world here at Does DEF CON as you go to any conversation and there's someone saying, hey, I've got the best tool, I've got the best electronic skills. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm doing the Michael Jackson thing, you know? <laughs> I do the moonwalk, but yeah, no, you don't want to see that. I can't believe you don't know what an e-penis is. Why would I know what an e-penis is? <laughs> no. <laughs> you, know, there's a certain, you know the law against you can't yell fire in a, in, a, in a movie theater? I can't whip it out. There'd be like a drove of people stampeding each other Apparently for the exit. Apparently you also can't yell shooter in a movie theater. <laughs> oh. Oh. Too soon. <laughs> So, so the F peen, the fail penis, is you measure it the inverse, and that's what this equation is supposed to show right here, is you measure the inverse of the 
of the e-penis. The e-penis is large. Your fail penis is very, very small. So w when a large corporation gets hacked, the next time a military contractor gets hacked, or the next time... <laughs> it's a donation. Okay. <laughs> Take it off. Donations. Okay. Somebody out there wants to see Bob Graham topless. So the next time a military contractor gets hacked, like a Lockheed Martin or whatever, we need to talk not about their security, but the size of their e-penis. Oh, the other F penis, sorry. <laughs> so many penises, you can't keep them straight. <laughs> so, so what you're saying, we really want to have a really small F penis. No, no, no. You don't want... The, the, your small F penis, your fail... You want your... <laughs> the size of your... You want to have big... You want to, to, it's the inverse size. Remember, you pay $200 to sit in this room you know, and listen I'm, I'm to this right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, where, where do you begin measuring the FP from? Is it from the balls or the taint? <laughs> <laughs> By balls, I mean the spherical uh, fell... You know, from the anus, of course. Or from the anus, right. Hey, Dave, you, you, get to, <laughs> Dave, you get to chug the first glass of maple syrup, by the way. <laughs> Are you sure this is maple syrup? This is this isn't some cream of a la half or something, right? There, there, there's not like when I when it I, is dark and lovely, Dave. All right. Well, well, I just don't want to chug it and have a picture of you jizzing in like in this cup on the screen. Now. I can you know, like it was sugar and salty at the same time. Is there no protection for the people in the front row? <laughs> Smooth. I can't swallow. I need some help up here. <laughs> You've had a lot of practice. Come on. Dave, I hate it when it runs off your lip like that. I'm just trying to keep my FP big. Chew it. Chew it. Come on. All I gotta say is if, uh, if, if Hop did jizz in that, he, he probably should see a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot tell what he's been eating by his flavor. Dave, you're not diabetic by any chance, are you? I think I am now. <laughs> need some room to cut that down? No. <laughs> <laughs> The last thing I need. Isn't that the ass rum? So I figured out that I'm a bully, and one of the things I bully these days is the United Nations. Back in 2007, they had a big fail. Huge SQL vulnerabilities, SQL injection vulnerabilities on the website. And this is the, the home page. You see in the lower right where hackers have defaced their, their, web, their web page. And so this was a spokesman saying, hey, we're definitely getting right on this. So I noticed a few days later that the SQL injection vulnerability hadn't been fixed. This was back in 2007, so I wrote a little blog post on it. It's a good example of, of SQL injection vulnerabilities. You want to help people understand the whole uh, like Bobby table sort of thing from XKCD. This is a good example. I'm, I'm going to have to stop you there for a second. It's literally like there's a giant ball of like rubber in my stomach now. Anything you hurl, you have to lick back up again. You know, this, this looked funny in Super Troopers, but take it from me. <laughs> Unhinging your jaw is never funny. <laughs> so in 2009, two years later, I happened to be on the UN website. And so, of course, as usual, when I'm typing in the URL, my finger slipped and I hit the quote key right before the return key. <laughs> Purely by accident. I don't mean to do it. It's just a common typing problem I have. 
So I notice it has the same failure it had two years ago. So here are the screen disks from... <laughs> so they were getting right on it, but at sort of UN speed, I think. At the speed of peace. <laughs> uh, and well, thank God it wasn't apartheid, because then it'd still be broken. And the funny thing about this I, was... I trust them to run the internet. Oh. So the funny thing about this was, it was two years to the day since my previous blog post. It just sort of just happened that way. I didn't actually plan that. But in 2010, I did plan about it. I said, okay, it's August. I need to go take a look at the, at the UN again and see if they fixed the problem. And indeed, they had. That URL it no longer worked. My, my injection no longer worked. But they had a little print. Wait, does this mean your FP was big or small? I, can, I can't keep it straight. Well, I'm trying to, 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 to laugh and say it's small. It's the inverse. That was the whole idea of the one over is your inverse of... A Math jokes at, at, at DEF CON, really? Yeah, they don't work. So that's a fail. <laughs> so in 2010, they had fixed that URL, that SQL injection. But they had a print icon, so I hit print on that URL and then added the accidentally again, not on purpose, the quote character, and then got an SQL injection. So they'd fixed the one problem I'd blogged about, but they hadn't fixed really pretty much anything. So how long have you enjoyed being a cyber terrorist? <laughs> you don't enjoy it at all. <laughs> enjoy it all. It's just work, work, work. <laughs> So in 2011, I didn't get around to checking it out. But some hackers did for me. They ran, I don't know, Burp Suite or something against the site. And they came up with a whole list of SQL injection problems. So as it stands today, the, the, after five years, the UN have not fixed pretty much anything. They're still vulnerable to SQL injection. If you want to go have fun and deface a popular website or a well-known website, <laughs> it's a great little target for you. Not them recommending it but sometimes our fingers do slip when typing in URLs. By the way, a quick announcement. So we are taking donations for our two charities, for cancer and for the EFF here. The, there's a couple of cases of beer down there. there there's no relation between the two. <laughs> but I would just like to express that we are taking donations here for our two wonderful charities and that there's some beer over there. And, well, anyway, that, that's just kind but of. But under all no I circumstances say. would we ever sell you any beer. My wife, that this brings up a because funny thing. Because selling beer in a casino is illegal. <laughs> but we're taking donations here. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a couple cases of beer down somewhere in the room. Poorly protected. Whatever. Yeah. So this, this brings up a, an interesting thing I found about Rich's family. Actually, I was on Genealogy.com for some reason looking up Rich Mogul. It turns out his grandfather was a bootlegger. Um, I don't know if you saw that on there, but it, yeah, I actually have Jewish mafia connections. <laughs> For real. You, you got to remember, though, peeps, Canada saved you from prohibition. You're welcome. Blame Canada. Blame Canada. So the funny All thing about the UN story is the persistence of this fail. After five years, they still fail. And that's why we need to use terms like APT or APF is because SQL injection, how long has that been the number one attack on the internet? How, how long has phishing been number two on the internet? These things are extraordinarily persistent. So last year, around March, there was another interesting fail. And this was the number two registrar on the internet, the number two certificate authority. And they had a fun little fail where they had uh, bogus certificates were issued in their name. And this is the certificate. Um, of course, none, none of us can read it because we don't read Base 64, but that's the certificate. Maybe you don't. <laughs> you know, if you were to get up here and you want to just read it off for us and translate. <laughs> it says. <laughs> oh, wait. So here's the quote from the, the CEO of Komodo. Which, by the way, in RSA conference uh, earlier this year, he won the award for the uh, Entrepreneur of the Year for 2011 when he got hacked. And this was his quote. He said, this was extremely sophisticated and critically executed. It was very well orchestrated and, and very clinical attack. 
All the above leads us to one conclusion, and one obvious conclusion that only an idiot would disagree with, and that is this was a state-driven attack. And some security experts got on board and, and agreed with them that this was not a random hacker. So I exchanged emails with the hacker back and forth. Um, I tracked down, there's a comment on our blog and he used a handle and then I tracked it down to a Twitter handle that had just been created and found out all of his little contact information. So what you're saying is one of the guys in your midget porn chat room <coughs> hacked Komodo. <laughs> <laughs> Is, it, is, that, is, it, is that what this boils down to? David, remember, you're the one who turned me on to it, so. <laughs> so the guy and the, said old, and the only person in there is Rich Mogul. <laughs> <laughs> I got two kids to put through college, man. Don't fuck with me. Or do. Yeah. <laughs> so the guy said he's just a student. He's a computer engineering. He has no relationship to the government or the various oppressive app apparatuses in, in Iran, like the besiege. He's just like any other student, just, you know, hacking. So I asked him, well, how do you do it? Like, what advanced state-funded techniques did he use? And he said, well, it's just SQL injection, privilege escalation, getting a little shell prompt, getting a remote desktop with RDP, investigating things, running strings on binaries, and that's reverse engineering and finding the passwords and then getting the certificate generated. So how did we all know that this was from Iran? Well, the Komodo has logs and it shows a bunch of Iranian IP addresses and these actually turned out to be true. I, I talked to the hacker and he said, yeah, he'd made a mistake in trying to anonymize his connection. Normally, most of his traffic did come through uh, anonymous proxies, but he occasionally made a mistake and some of his IP addresses came from Iran. So Moxie Marlin Spike last year at Black Hat gave a really cool talk where one of the many things he addressed was uh, the Komodo hack and how he tracked down his log files on his servers, um, <laughs> the reference, uh, the referrer field from this guy and found out this guy had been browsing his website. And what the guy had browsed coming to Mark, Moxie Marlin Spike's website from was the Hack5 website, which is for people introductory to hacking. Uh, they actually got a lot of good content, and, uh, but came from a video on how to use SSL strip. And then he would look for the incoming search terms from Google. <laughs> that said SSL protocol man in the middle, how to. So this is what these experts are calling uh, not a random hacker, must be state funded is a guy who comes from Hack5 wanting to know how to use SSL strip. Well, Rob, if, if you hack Komodo, you didn't do it by yourself. You didn't wake up one day and just hack Komodo. There was probably a teacher or uh, a president or something that helped you do it along the way. Yeah, they, 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 they built the roads for me. <laughs> fucking Republicans. So what? <laughs> Wait, you're fucking Republicans now? Now, you will do anything to put those kids through college. <laughs> and what a noble cause that is, too. So not all experts were on board saying this must be a state-sponsored attack. So in this case, there's a quote from a guy who said, every breach is sophisticated just like everyone is special, which I thought was a really good quote. <laughs> so... What these, ex what these people imagine is, I don't know, something like this. You've got soldiers in a room with computers executing cyber attacks and cyber warfare, aiming their cyber warfare at the enemy and launching them. And you have these intercontinental ballistic viruses that then hit them and blow them up. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what most of the internet's about. <laughs> When I met my wife on IRC back in the 90s, there, Wait, what? there was cyber, and it's nothing at all like what General <laughs> Alexander wants us to do. <laughs> That's what you think. <laughs> it does seem kind of weird that the NSA has gone to a whole like, cyber sets kind of thing. So, so this is what the cyber warfare really happens. Is, and this, is, this is from Kevin Smith from... Uh, 
Die, die Hard 4. Four. It's some guy in his basement. Hmm? Live free or die hard. Speaking of fail, Die Hard 4 fits that quite well. <laughs> Dude, that was the greatest movie ever. They rerouted all the gas in the Northeast to blow up one pumping station. <laughs> Are you saying that can't happen? Come on. We have experts that can confirm that. It didn't so happen that way. what Dave and I do a lot is, I guess you would call them APT pen tests. And it's not because of the advanced persistent threat. Well, we are pretty, pretty good. But um, it's about the fail. Their fail is so great that it makes the pen test so good. And the thing we like most is Active Directory. The Active Directory, if you describe it to someone like your mother who doesn't speak computerese, <laughs> <laughs> or your father, or your grandfather, depending on how old you are and how old they are, uh, is, is Active Directory is putting all your eggs in one basket and then just dropping the basket arbitrarily. And so we, we have this site, it's a Fortune 500 company, and they have, I don't know, tens of thousands of employees, computers up the yin yang, everything going through Active Directory with multiple domains, all trusting up to one root domain that's got one, one ring to unify them all. And so they, every year they hire a different company to, to do a pen test on the idea that, which is actually a pretty good idea, that they get some diversity from, their, from the point of view of pen tests. And the last two pen tests, the last two years, had well gone well in that the pen testers didn't really find much. And so we came in, and there's really no better way of describing this other than we raped them. <laughs> and so... Did you yell surprise first? <laughs> um, and so when you think of SQL injection you think normally of like going against their, their main server their main website now, we just used Maltigo and found a lot of subsidiary websites that were only casually related to their main website and I think the one we found I kind of haze in the details is one for the retirees union and so it was in their active directory domain but yet it was sort of outside their normal IT control because no one in IT really cared about what happened with the retirees. So of course, you have then the typical story, SQL injection, yada, 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 we now own Active Directory and then own everything in the corporation. And, and owning Active Directory means you own everything. It means you own all the payroll systems, you can create new employees, you own all the banking systems, you own the systems that the lawyers use. And by the way, this is the thing that they got them most the twigged out, is that if we touch any computer that the lawyers use, that means we now have changed evidence. That now means we can get subpoenaed in any lawsuits they have with, with, uh, with other companies. So they sort of panicked and behaved poorly. And so we were doing this on site out through the internet and back in again, but they came by with security and escorted Dave from the building. Well, that's not, that's not that, that rent, like a rare thing, though. I mean, that happens a lot. <laughs> well, we often don't complete our pen test because we get too many results. But, so, and then the next day, though, they escorted him back on because he was there on site in the hotel room because this was out of the hometown. Escorted him back on site and made him read a book. Being that they realized that having him with all that control off site, out of you know, not watching him, was worse than having him on site. I ate a lot of chili for lunch every day. <laughs> Pretty bad to be on site, too. So then, much of the pen test was then spent with Dave just sitting on site reading the book. Not even, in, not even an, a Kindle, because that's a computer, it's reading a book. <laughs> no. Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> so, so that was one way. So they said, okay, well, let's not do any more SQL injection. We know that's a problem. Let's just continue with the pen test with doing other techniques. So we went and we took a flash game. Um, <laughs> and there's all sorts of great examples. So you, you grab any flash game and change the art. And so you, you change your art, like here's this Punch the Monkey is a common, well-known game. You change the art so it's the logo of your competitor. Uh, well, their competitor. 
And then you change the logo on a flash drive being your own logo. Um, so one might be Lockheed Martin, if, if that's your enemy, and the other one is Boeing, for example. And so, and then you leave this around in the parking lot, and then people pick them up, and they've got the corporate logo on them, so they think, hey, that's a good thing, it's trustworthy, I'll stick them in the USB drive. That's how I get most of my dates. <laughs> <laughs> they then see this game, they load it up, and they run it, and they have fun punching the logo of the uh, opposing company. And then they email them around. And we did stats. We, we had, when they ran the program, of course, we Trojan this little flash game. And we had stats figuring out where it came from. And it would be employees, it was, wasn't the USB drives being the most common source, it was employees emailing it to each other, including to the VPs and the CEO. Who, so, by the way, approved this test, yet played the game anyway. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, this was a super secret test. Like only like five people in the company knew that we were doing it. And those five, well, four of those five people played the game. <laughs> and then later on went, oh, we didn't realize it was this thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, I came, but it came from an internal email server. I knew I could trust it. So, um, so then the yada, 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 own actor directory, you know, cut our own checks. Why do you yada, yada, yada over the best part? <laughs> So another thing they had, um, they had laptops from Dell with uh, full disk encryption on them, and um, they had uh, FireWire on them. So of course there's a well-known FireWire, FireWire DNA, DMA exploit. And they'd done some other bad things. They, every laptop, even the users did not have root of their own laptops. They did not have administrator access. But they had the administrator um, password on every one of those devices that also worked on the active domain controllers. So we firewired DMA, blah, 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 and very, very short yada, yada, you have Active Directory again. It wasn't too short, if you know what I mean. <laughs> That's a Seinfeld you? reference for all you young people who don't get it. So here, here's the, the, the fun exploit. So again, you have the configure exploit, which us pen testers really, really like because there's a lot of it open. Their past pen test had not worked. Even though they had the configure exploit vulnerable to a lot of machines on a lot of machines, um, the last pen testers couldn't exploit it. That's because the well-known exploits didn't work. So what Dave did is he grabbed a virtual machine, installed the same image they had running on machines. He ran the exploit. Went, ran WimDGB, found out why the exploit didn't work. It was just a small offset problem, so he added 12 to the offset, and then the exploit worked. And, and then, of course, yada, yada, yada on, on the Active Directory domain. And I point this out because there's so much out there that the difference between active um, APT and just your normal kids just requires someone willing to go through one extra little step. It requires, in this case, the, the skills of actually, I guess, some reverse engineering skills, um, which Dave is very famous for, as well as just knowing how to exploit to work. And so, so anyway, so that was yada, 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 own the Active Directory. <laughs> Pay no attention to the man in the skirt. <laughs> So anyway, that's, that, that's my talk on fail, and um, my, my point I'm again is, if there's no such thing as security, there's really just only fail. Okay. Oh, you're going to go? Dave, you're going last. You're going last I'm going, I'm going there's last. a reason Dave's going last. He has a ridiculous cool, awesome thing to show, and I'm embarrassed to be on the same stage. And he's even, right. he's even gonna leave his pants on. Right. Can, I, so, can I borrow somebody's Mac adapter? I left mine in the room. Oh, here you go. Go ahead and plug this in. <laughs> Alright, so while we're waiting for Rich to, uh, to plug up, why don't we all ask Rich to get naked again this year? Because he's been naked for, what, three years in a row now? Uh, it's not naked. All right, who wants to see Rich drop his pants? Rock Say, rock the house. Tradition. There we go. I've been working out, and for the safety of the audience, I will have to keep my pants on because we're worried about a stampede. 
This is spectacular. Well, don't be a don't be a coward all day, boy. Take the shot. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the pants. Come on. Enjoy. <laughs> pants dropping. <coughs> Marky Mark. If we can get $100 in the next 30 seconds in this bin. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. No. Put it, you got to put it next to it so I can count. <laughs> 20, 40, 60, 80. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Rich Python. For the record, I believe I'm the only individual on the face of the planet who has taken their pants off at both RSA and DEF CON. We would like to thank Rich Mogul for removing his trousers in support of Hacking <laughs> Cancer Research and BEFF. Is that a banana in your hammock or are you just happy to see us? Admittedly, you can see more email? when I wear my cycling shorts on a ride, but whatever. That's literally called oh, the, oh, uh, the management consulting post. <laughs> I remember one time on a stage. Things are so packed in, in there, he couldn't get it in. <laughs> yeah, it was at the fail panel, and it was Larry putting money in my pants. You know what? I think that he knew he was going to take his pants off today, and he wore cool underwear. <laughs> I, I, I may have done that. Wait a minute, you're not wearing cool underwear? <laughs> Just to be safe. They're breezy. I like you the wear breeze. the same underwear every day? <laughs> what the shit? <laughs> Too much information. <laughs> I, I swim with them on. That, that's good enough. All right, so um, this year I decided to go a little old tech. So before I got involved in information security, oh, my name's Rich Mogul, uh, my background was actually in physical security. So I used to run security at concerts, football games, those sorts of things um, when I was like crazy young and absolutely shouldn't have been responsible for, uh, or shouldn't have had that level of responsibility. Now they're just bringing money up still. I must have been that good. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, I spent a lot of time traveling. And one of the things that really pisses me off is for some reason I cannot bring this item on an airplane. Who's got one of these things? The little you kill a keys, you put it on your keychain, you bring it on. Uh, a friend of mine who's actually in the military was bitching about this because she, you know, carries guns a lot and in like, you know, war zones and everything else uh, and was in uniform. And no, she wasn't one of those cases where she had like, you know, her M4 with her. She was just in uniform walking through and couldn't carry this little thing on a uh, domestic flight. And so it got me thinking, well, if they're going after these things, what can we do about it? So fairly soon after these new rules were implemented, I found a way around that. Now, has anybody ever taken your bag and opened it up and it's all metal in the back? So all I did was tape it onto the metal and that was fine. And I went through security and never had a problem with it until in it theory, fell off. Right, right, Rich, in theory, right? I mean, you're not trying to circumvent TSA security or anything. It's only illegal if you get caught. <laughs> So you're saying that you would sell Statute beer of limitations is what? Seven years? This was like 10 years ago. So, so, uh, so are, are, are you saying that you would sell beer in a casino as long as you don't get caught? I'm not selling beer in a casino. There's beer in a casino and a, a thing. Yeah, I'm stripping <laughs> in a casino for money. There's a difference. <laughs> Anyway, uh, apparently the tape wore off and it fell down into the bag and they pulled it off and that was the end of that and I bought more and then they caught the next one on my keychain after a few trips and uh, that was the end of that. And then I was on a trip and, oops, let me grab my props. What about your props, Rich? So here's my multi-tool. It's got, you know, all sorts of blades and stuff on it and I had accidentally left it in my bag. I went through security at four different airports before I realized this thing had just been sitting in my bag. And I thought about it, so I took it out, and then I went to the security guy at the airport, and I said, hey, I just want you to know, I've been through here about four or five times in the past month, and my, uh, my multi-tool was, it, with knife blades on it, was in my bag by accident. I totally didn't mean to do it, but, you know, maybe you want to do a little training or something else. And he goes, well, what was it? And I go, you know, multi-tool, uh, one of those Gerber things. And he goes, oh, those are really hard. And, okay, that instilled me with a lot of confidence. 
Well, he's accurate. It it has a, a it, it, it is hardness hard. of did quite did solid. he say did he say it's really hard or did he say it's it's really hard? He's like, yeah, it's like it shows up as a brick of metal, and I'm like, well, fuck, <laughs> for Christ's sake. Um, so I thought, huh? Well, what else could we do? And that's where I came up with the idea for DEF CON this year, because I didn't have a lot of time to do any coding or anything along those lines. Um, and so I took a different point of view. And I thought, maybe if I get a little creative, I could sneak some other things into a bag. Is this going to end with you taking a young girl to, like, Guatemala for sale? <laughs> <laughs> because, I told you, it's, it not, it's not RSA. Um, so I went ahead and I uh, cut a little metal and did a little work. And here's the reason why. How many of you have bags, you know, kind of like this? This is a normal travel bag. It's in Eagle Creek. And when I look inside, well, it, it's kind of cool. So there's the, a picture of the bag. And one of the things in the bag is it's got this space for the supports. And conveniently, there's Velcro on there, so you can get those out if you want to turn it into a completely soft bag instead of a semi-rigid bag. It's one of the things that converts into a backpack. So just, just so we all know, how long does it take you to go from semi-rigid to soft? <laughs> it depends on if you're in the room. It's hard. <laughs> so here's the actual real strut. It's a little bit curved. It's made out of aluminum. <laughs> Insert Bill Clinton joke here. <laughs> and I thought, well, you know, hey, I did my little thing with the utility keys. So what would happen if I taped this onto the back? Could I get this through security? Um, and then I went ahead and I did those modifications I was talking about. Oops, and it's totally slipped in. Oh. <laughs> Quick, get it before it's more than the tip. Um, and I made some modifications converted. to it and uh, put, a, put a bit of an edge on it, put a little edge on the tip. My wife was annoyed. She said, no, no, you got to make it look like a real sword. So I went ahead and I made a, a hilt. Do you hear that a lot there, Rich? Yeah. <laughs> And so I went and made the lice hilt out of a non-radiation noticeable material, radio opaque material. <laughs> Going to be? And, and now I have a fucking sword in my bag. I like how it's size appropriate for you too. I think I need to donate for Dave's comment because that was really funny. <laughs> what? How much did I sharpen it? Only the tip. <laughs> yeah, not enough. Now, oops, next part of the story is, as it turns out, I went out on Twitter and I said, hey, does anybody have an x-ray machine I can borrow? That's and normal, I got a couple of responses. That's a question on Twitter. Yeah, reasonable. Um, but it also turns out that a friend of mine is captain of a sheriff's department in a state not to be identified uh, and has access to actually one of the high quality machines because he's in charge of the jail um, as part of his duties. So I went ahead and I said, hey, what sorts of modifications can I do and get it through airport security x-rays? Because I got all my shit through back then, but that was like 10 years ago. So this was kind of interesting. It turns out they have really fucking good x-ray machines. So let's take a look at what they've got here. You can clearly see this metal bar with the knife tape to it. You can see the back of the knife. You can clearly see all the other metal bars, and you can even see the individual blades on the multi-tool. And he decided to use this as a training exercise. Um, he went ahead and ran it at a bunch of different wavelengths. And I've never seen these kinds of images before, so this is really interesting to me. Because how often do you get to run a bunch of weapons through the screening um, at an airport and to go home and Depends. just Kept once, on. or not, <laughs> only once, just once. A, a rich, I have <laughs> and a you don't get to take pictures of the screen. Um, you can see other thing. Anybody notice the other little thing hiding in there? There's a nope. There's no screwdrivers. So well, those are uh, whatever knife blades. There's also one of these nylon knives. You can see on there. So supposedly I thought, hey, that'll get through, no problem at all, and it's clear as fucking day. Um, as they dig in, they did a little zoom action. You can literally, by the way, this is steel, not <laughs> aluminum, um, like the aluminum bar that comes with it. So you can even tell the difference. The aluminum bar barely shows up on the x-ray, and the steel bar itself, you can still see through it, 
and see the knife blades underneath it. Yeah. So I thought I was going to get all this shit through. And he said, well, our one junior guy barely saw the hilt of the sword. But pretty much everything else, yeah. Um, and as we go here, take a look at the multi-tool on the side. I don't have a laser pointer or anything, but you can see that it actually breaks down. You can see the, uh, um, uh, you know, the little plier blades and everything else within inside of that. You can see the nylon knife I put in there. You can kind of see the outline of the sword hilt in there. Um, pretty much everything shows up. And at the different wavelengths, you can actually go through and see uh, you know, a little more clearly or less clearly. So when you see him hit that button and it changes the color, I thought it was changing the colors, and what they're actually doing with the x-ray machines is they're changing the wavelengths so that they can actually go through and they can see a little bit more of what's inside there. Um, and then he went so, ahead hey, and Rich, just... Yeah? Rich, can I interrupt you for a second? Of what you're going to. How, how did you get to Vegas? I flew. How, so how are you planning on getting home? <laughs> can I borrow your car? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, checked baggage. Actually, <laughs> I made one of my partners fly with Hey, us. Rich, did you learn about other techniques that prisoners use to smuggle? You can use those instead. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get there. <laughs> I'm only partway through this presentation. Is there a live demo? There will be a live demo. It's getting a little thin up there. Can I help you with that? <laughs> <laughs> it's getting a little thin somewhere else well, if you want to help out. <laughs> Literally, Rich Muggle just elicited a jack for world sex. <laughs> In case anybody missed that, that's exactly what had just happened. <laughs> I'm married, man. Come on. Um, so, joke. Um, no, won't be married for long. Uh, anyway, you can see all the images pop through, the different colors. When they do this weird black and white thing, you can see it all. So I thought that was pretty fascinating that they can actually pretty much detect anything you can put up. Even the nylon thing really stands out. Now... The fail part of this is, is if I look, did look on eBay, and you can buy one of these things for about $20,000. Usually it's a, it's a used one from a courthouse or a hospital. So if you want to go ahead and buy your own machine and see how you can stack things to go ahead and get it through airport security, you could do that. And I'm pretty sure if you spent more than 10 minutes working on your project, you'd probably be able to come up with those sorts of things. But on the other hand, I've got to give them credit. That stuff's not too bad. Now, the part of this is, is I have a fucking sword and we're at DEF CON, and we're on stage. So I thought it might make a nice demonstration to show how sharp this thing is. Because one thing is, is these struts, if I had sharpened the aluminum edge versus putting my own steel bars in, they wouldn't detect that. If you actually go ahead and look at the images, you know, it's not like you can tell what the edge is on this thing. You just know that there is metal in the bag. So. Are we in the Gallagher show now? Does anybody know who Gallagher is? I think the plastic is to keep the blood off the podium. We have a sword, we have plastic, we have a grapefruit. Who's got cash? Anyone? Come on! This is your chance to demonstrate your ninja skills on stage at DEF CON. Martin will sit next to it. Fruit ninja! <laughs> Fruit ninja! We're not talking about Dave. Hey, Rich, why don't you just get naked again? That seemed to, that seemed to be a crowd, crowd pleaser. No one? Come on up! It's all yours. Woo! Yeah. Wait, is he coming for the sword or for you being naked? Uh, There's a pin. Yeah, someone's like, is that blade going to come flying out and spear me in the eye? <laughs> There's a pin. There's always a splash zone a at the fail panel. We got a $50 donation. That is going above me on. What's your name? What? Dexter? No, seriously, a fucking Dexter plastic and a sword? Yeah. You can't plan that shit. Only. This may be the most perfect moment in DEF CON history. <laughs> Dexter, I present to you the, the sword. gnome sword. It's, it, this means you're the king of all the gnome people now. <laughs> shit, it worked. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Side to side, side to side, there you go. <laughs> hey, all grapefruit, so grapefruit! Thank you. 
Anybody want to buy this and take it home? Because <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> hey, Rich, do you General can... Alexander, how you doing? <laughs> hey, do you think you can hide that in your anal cavity? We're getting to that. <laughs> Presentation ain't over yet. Don't jump the gun, man. So, I was looking up things and I'm I thought... always premature. I saw this article one day that the TSA took away Play-Doh. What does Play-Doh potentially look like on x-ray machines? Semen. <laughs> does not look like the staff of a submarine, Dave. So, you apparently, I did a little bit of research, we're not allowed to bring th more than three ounces of fluid or gels on board an aircraft. Um, a little looking around, browsing the web, um, which might mean they're gonna be knocking on my door for terms like explosives, airplane quantity, um, revealed that what the hell? It's common. Aren't you glad uh, that you don't have anyone looking at your browser history? Yeah. <laughs> Shit, did you hack me again? <laughs> um, you know, I, I think it was around four ounces of plastic explosives put on the right part of an airplane would go ahead and, uh, and do that. So, you know, we have the full body scanners that are supposed to prevent our ability to get those on there. So, uh, um, this is Larry Pesci. And... <laughs> <laughs> Not enough pier six. Yeah, so we've got a picture of Larry there. Where'd my and go? I thought we would put this to the test. So we did a couple of things. Let me get the saran wrap. Oh, good lord. Everybody, every, every, he's getting a saran wrap. And we have Play Doh. Who's got an ass? <laughs> this is for science, people. <laughs> No, no, no. Jaded, come no, on up. No, no, he is an ass. Wait. Okay, the guy wearing the knit mankini doesn't want to have saran wrap wrapped around his ass and the Play-Doh shoved in. <laughs> this is an external experiment. Yeah. If you want to see the internal, go to Hacker Pimps later tonight. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, Rich? Rich? Yeah? Don't click shit. Okay. So. <laughs> so, wait, you just sit around all day at home thinking this shit up? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think an analyst does? I get bored. Oh. <laughs> okay, off with the bra. We're going to put it under your boobs. Yeah, baby. <laughs> we don't want to get hair in it. All right. How many ounces do we think this is? Okay. So, so, Rich, you seem to, you say don't want hair in it as if you've had some good experience with this. With the hair in it. <laughs> Small e penis or big one? I can't get this. I think we're going to have to go for the ass. The chest isn't working. You have no idea how often you hear that in horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> or my nightmares. <laughs> All right. I think this one's not going to work. Oh. Nobody's willing to donate their ass to science. Why don't you put it on your ass, Rich? Dillis! You're all creationists. Dillis! Dillis! Are you making a phallic symbol out of... That's not an ass. It's yep. a small planet. I don't know shame if you're still trying. That's no more. Oh, my God. All right, what's up? Not even going. Do I need to drop trail? Go behind the podium. All right. Do, do, we, do we have some sort of... Do we have some sort of counter for the number of people who drop trow in the fail panel? <laughs> We're going to need Gil more saran wrap. <laughs> Gillis, I love you and all, but I'm not going to sleep nah. tonight, I don't think. Oh. <laughs> I'm realizing it's not going to stick. Let's hope we didn't have the chili burger if for I, lunch. Uh, if you'd like to take it to the bathroom, though, hey, there you go. <laughs> Give it a shot. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mogul just sent a young man hey, off hey, to the bathroom. You, if you rolled that up the right way, play put, no. he's, he's on the run, and I'm not going. <laughs> he's a little too excited for that. And I'm wondering if he's going to come back. <laughs> All right, who's got a stopwatch? Well, Wait, do you, do you really want the Play-Doh back, Rich? 
apparently can roll it up the right way, stick it down the front, and look manly. What fun did that be? So, like Mythbusters, I thought, what else could I do to take it over the top? <laughs> and I thought, what are the odds I could get a rocket launcher on an airplane? Maybe are not you, that. Are you, Rich, in fact, a member of the NRA? Uh, no, I gave up. They got all nutty on me. I used to be. And I'm a liberal. <coughs> so what I look, realized is that if you look at a model rocket, it is made of no metallic materials. So you have a cardboard tube. You have now plastic or balsa wood fins, which can be removed and just stacked together so they don't actually look like rocket fins. They just slide right off, depending on which models that you buy. And so it just looks like kind of a weird shaped thing. What? Incoming, incoming, incoming. <laughs> what do we got? Come on up. How much did you get in there? I mean, on there. So, two baggies worth. Two baggies. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Time to make the waffles. <laughs> Rob, do you have any more gloves? Martin, Martin, give me two of those. It's too late right. for gloves, Rich. You're infected. <laughs> I still have to pee later, and I might not have a chance to wash my hands first. How's your e peeing doing there, Rich? So let me just recap this panel oh, so far. Uh, <laughs> We've had a I'm bunch of overweight people in strappy t-shirts. We, we had a guy talk for 20 minutes about penises. <laughs> we, we found out it's not good to, to run Ethernet out to the parking lot. And we had a gnome with a sword <laughs> pick up some ass Play-Doh. <laughs> and these people all paid $200 cash at the door. <laughs> to see it. All right, so... Well, this is, I call that the aristocrats. Yeah. <laughs> so no metallic parts, the uh, propellants and everything else are the sorts of things that you could... Um, I didn't have enough time to go into all the details, but you could very likely get through. And model rockets, if you pack them with gunpowder... Rich, rich. ...do things like rich, explode. I'd, li I'd like you to go home without an anal exam that you didn't intend. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, we took that, we uh, actually got a whole launch system with no metal parts in it. We went ahead and we placed, uh, put a gunpowder payload in there and decided to go ahead and launch it out of our bag. <laughs> I live in Arizona, so that's not only legal but encouraged, especially if you point it south. <laughs> are, are and here's we? the one where it blows up. So the problem is we launched into the sun, but you get to see a little bit there. The rocket exploded. It completely obliterated all the pieces. Now, now this, look guys, this isn't exactly realistic, but I like to blow shit up and thought it would be fun. And there's another last view of the rocket launching, and you can kind of see the puff up at the top where the payload goes. Tell so us more about your payload there? When I mentioned that I was doing some project with explosives... Nikita, who runs, uh, is the only, uh, one of the only two paid staff members of DEF CON and runs all the speaker stuff, said, seriously, no fucking pyrotechnics on stage at DEF CON. I already told one speaker no. I will give you a dollar. <laughs> if you put that up your ass and hit the button. <laughs> Do you, Rich Mogul, have hemorrhoids right now?
Okay, you gotta put the safety pin in. Three, two, one. Are you really doing this? <laughs> <laughs> You know, just you know, this panel was so bad for a minute that I really thought you were going to set off a rocket. Were you worried or hopeful? I was a little excited, a little trembly. Uh, yeah, so that's it for the slides, folks. Thank you. It's coming, Rich. So, um, you, I don't know who's next, but I have to wash my hands. <laughs> Rich, it doesn't matter how hard you scrub, the feeling won't come off. Uh, would, you, would you mind using the gloves to close your laptop and remove it? Because you touched it. I don't know whose that is. But, uh, The way this is going, I'm just leaving gloves up here on the podium. <laughs> well then. I, uh, I, I would like to point out just for one moment that as much as my uh, compatriots up here on stage uh, take this uh, Misogyny Network stuff seriously, uh, I am the only one wearing a skirt. And a thong. The more money you put in this bowl and or <clears throat> the waistband of my kilt. Oh, crap. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> the better you will be doing for the world and for our environment. I promise to keep some of my clothes on. There's not room. <laughs> you know what? That's something in my favor, I think. All right. Whoa, we can feed HD to the monitors here? Cool. I did not plan for that. Thank God. <laughs> mm, that's not right. Why are you booing me? What have I done to harm you? Yeah, that's wrong. Anybody know how to fix that? 1024 by 768. Yeah, it's the that I have to find the monitor panel thing. There you go. Was anybody else going to chug syrup or was that just me? <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's dead now. The rest of us are smart enough to say no. I, I didn't realize it was an option. You know, every now and then, I did, actually. So I'm going to reboot my computer. In the meantime, Take it off. <laughs> my eyes are burning. <laughs> you guys should know better than to suggest things. I might actually do them. I'm just going to prepare for my talk silently. <clears throat> so uh, you, you guys know that we're, uh, we're collecting donations here for a couple of good charities. Can anybody name the charities? Fuck cancer. Yeah, you, you know, none of you can get the stuff in the same order, so that what you hear is that there's four charities. <clears throat> uh, I, I was going to talk about this for a bit during the time when I'm actually supposed to be talking, so I'll talk about it now instead. So uh, that cancer thing really sucks, huh? Uh, has anybody uh, not had someone contract cancer in their lives? Why the frack did that just reboot? Oh, sorry. Uh, has anybody been untouched by cancer in their lives? Give yeah. One hand. We, we, have, on. we have one hand? Yep. Gentleman in the hat right there. Wait, where? To your right. 
Yeah, you got, I'm, you, you are a lucky, lucky man, sir. The rest of us, not so much. Um, We're out of time. We have to get Dave on as well, so. Yeah. Okay. Does your computer work, Dave? Yeah. Dave, you're up. Oh. Oh, hang on. We're going to switch to Dave for a second. This is what happens when I get close to you. Yeah. Where's the fucking thing? Yep. Let me first. So I, I love following the, uh, the, the cancer speech. Everything I say now just seems douchey. And I'm going to blame it on that because it wouldn't have sounded douchey before. So I have attention deficit disorder. It's, yes, it's, 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 a, it's a horrible thing. I sometimes will start a sentence and forget what... So, so, so Dave, how many uh, guys with uh, adults with uh, adult ADD does it take to change the light bulb? Hey, let's go ride bikes. Okay. <laughs> Dave, what you do? If he takes longer than me, then you know it's definitely not my fault. All right, so the point is I, uh, I have attention deficit disorder and I drink a lot. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a perfect wife or a husband for somebody. I, apparently I can be a wife too. <laughs> All right, whatever. I, I don't have one of those great slides that tells you who I am. I, I'm going to work on that for next year. So I am a, I'm easily amused. So I was at one of my favorite bars one day and I saw this. Everybody's seen this. It's uh, like a Windows error display on something where you don't think it runs Windows. It turns out this was a jukebox. And I walked by and went, well, hey, that's, that's pretty cool. My, my jukebox runs Windows. That's, that's pretty neat. What else does it do, right? Oh, my God. I can, I can play songs on the jukebox from my phone? Nice. Yes. Yes, you can. It's, it's called Barlink. That sure was neat back to my beer. Requisite woman with, a, with an assault weapon and uh, me in a bar. Wait a minute. Wait, hold on. And this is actually in real time how it happened. Uh, wait a minute. That sure does seem like a lot of work they did to make, a, make it able to play uh, uh, music from a phone in this one bar. I wonder how many other bars or locations. How does song submission work? HTTP. Be gone, evil temptress with beer and guns. There's hacking to do. <laughs> I'd like to say, I actually said that. <laughs> so I, uh, I jailbroke an iPhone. I cracked the app. If you've seen any of my other talks, this is easy. If you haven't, just imagine in your head I'm doing something magical and wizardry like right now. Like leaving it in a cab? <laughs> yes. I disassembled the app, and I started sniffing it. And oh my god, sure enough, this application that will cue music on a, on a jukebox goes over the network. It goes to a, a very specific place over HTTPS. And uh, it uses a method called login in the application uh, initially. Uh, but what it really uh, wants you to do is tie your location, uh, and it will find jukeboxes around you and say, hey, you can play at this jukebox because you're within 150 meters of it. Right, so I then looked for a, uh, a couple of more strings that actually helped the application use uh, the uh, iOS interface to find out how far you were away from everything. I found out uh, very quickly that I could make it so that I was within 100 meters of every jukebox in their network. <laughs> so I have an iPod right here. Well, that, that's, that was step three. Step one, I was going to collect underpants. Step two, hack all the jukeboxes. That's, that's what was left out of South Park. So this is actually a screenshot uh, earlier of this iPod up, up in my room. You can see I'm here in Vegas, right? But the application 
<laughs> it thinks I'm in Atlanta. I could, but wh why would you do that? When you can play at Umbop places. We got step two covered for you. Is there a new assurance underwear for men? You may have seen the commercial. I, this is I, for you. I have seen the commercial. Put them on. All right, please. Let me. Uh, Money. Let me call. Uh, let Money. Me, let me call. Let me, let, me, let me call somebody real quick. So we're going to. Uh, we're going to. Basically, yes. So this application uh, basically lets you play music on any of their jukeboxes. It, it, authenticates, uh, it authenticates you, and then when you request that a song be played, you have to specify a location ID. There's nothing stopping you once you've, uh, once you've authenticated from just submitting the song ID and every uh, uh, location ID. So I thought it would be really funny to make Hanson popular again. So what I'm doing right now is actually playing Hanson on every jukebox in their network. <laughs> I'm going to need you to quiet down for a second because we're going to call a bar and ask them why they're playing Hanson. This is why we wanted Dave to go last, is because we all suck. <laughs> I can, but that just doesn't seem very original anymore. All right, hold on one second. Hold on, quiet now. You're on AT&T, aren't you? <laughs> Why are you guys playing Hanson? Why are you playing Hanson? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I do this quite frequently. I, I have a cron job <laughs> schedule. <laughs> I have a cron job schedule to pick a day of the week, or pick a, uh, an hour of the day in a, a minute, and randomly play Hanson. <laughs> I then found out that uh, the statistics that they're using those jukeboxes actually affect things. Like people look at it and see what, what's popular now. So my goal for next year is to have Hanson as number one selling artist in the United States again. I'm done. Fuck you all. Oh, one more thing. If you, if you look at this app really closely, it allows you to upload your own songs. Dave, where can we get a copy of this application? <laughs> the Mac App Store. You can get it uh, at the App Store, actually. <laughs> AMI's uh, bar link. The, the unhacked one is. I made it turn blue. <laughs> You're pregnant. <laughs> How appropriate for misogyny networks. I sure hope you're not asking for any maternity time off. Last, last waffle order, so get your waffle order in. There's, well, there's room for more money in the bucket. Yeah. Absolutely, more Canada money in the bucket. You're off. There's still room. Thank you, Dan. Go. I'm going. So she said, hey. yeah. Is Marsha from the EFF or anyone else from the EFF in the room, please? Bueller? I'm from the EFF. Bullpucky. <laughs> Keep talking. I'd like to point out I'm sober. So I'd like to encourage everybody, uh, Jamie, when he finishes getting his slides on, if it's before 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. this evening, that's Hacker Pyramid. Where's my freaking mouse? And number of people on the stage, and number of people in the audience will be on 
Packer Pyramid tonight. We'll also be raising more money. And at some point, there's a special fail waffle iron that somebody made for us. It's really, really cool. And ah, I did it's it. not here. <laughs> you are truly a hacker, sir. You, sir, win one internet. Exactly. So I have to go really fast. Apparently, I only have like four minutes to do this. So keep. Mm. <laughs> That's this, the best you can do. This is a Come on, really? brief travelogue of fail. <clears throat> so last we met, I was wearing a shirt. <clears throat> uh, after DEF CON last year, I went home and uh, we moved uh, within two weeks of, of finishing DEF CON. I would strongly recommend that you do not do that. I also discovered that I hated my job. Uh, this, this was my uh, standing desk in my cubicle. Um, they couldn't order the right size standing desk. Apparently, I'm the tallest person in the corporation. Uh, but Solaris 7 manuals. <laughs> I finally found a use for Solaris 7 in my daily life. <laughs> also. Somewhere Scott McKinley is, is, is very happy. Uh, Neely is very happy. Yes. <clears throat> You're taking up my time, sir. Uh, Talk Winter, faster. Uh, I was starting to get sad, uh, and cancer was starting to affect more and more people in my life. Uh, there are entirely too many people who are dealing with it, and I, I hate to say this, but um, it's criminal the number of people who are dealing with it quietly without anyone knowing. So I will tell you this right now, you know someone who is dealing with cancer by themselves. This is not cool. Go to hackcancer.com and learn. Uh, <clears throat> what you do when you get sad is you go on vacation. So I went to Disney World with my family. Uh, thought I was having a heart attack. Uh, Rich and I are, are brothers in heart attacks at this point. Uh, I got a cool new job in the Bay Area. That's great, except... <laughs> but there's this thing called the North American Free Trade Agreement that's supposed to allow labor mil mobility for professionals. So I applied. And I got a work permit. I was happy, but first time for everything. It expires, so you have to reapply. <clears throat> and I was denied. Come down to Phoenix. We'll take care of you. <laughs> what the hell does that mean, Rich? Arizona is all about the uh, immigrant law stuff. So there's this thing called a management consultant, and, and it says uh, that you need to either have a um, bachelor degree or have five years of experience in a specialty related to the consulting engagement. Uh, <clears throat> I have more than five years' experience at this shit. In fact, I have a lot when you look at it, the full-blown version. I even am accredited. I can't believe you admitted that. And certifiable. But your government, those of you who are American in the audience, says that I need to be a computer systems analyst if I want to do what I do for a living because I use computers and I'm an analyst. <laughs> Their suggestion was that I go to a, co a community college and get a two-year diploma. But wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Haven't you seen what happens there? All kinds of wacky adventures. Like DEF CON. Right. Uh, except that would still only qualify me as a computer systems analyst because that's what Homeland Security has decided. It's interesting, though. They can't seem to get their story straight, whether they want people who know their stuff or not, uh, because they're going to build a major cyber army in the next two years. <clears throat> and I'm married to an American. I mean, how harmless can I be? I only live in Canada for one reason. Marijuana? And frankly, my home office is equivalent to a cubicle. Whether I'm working in my home office in Canada or I'm working in a cubicle in Santa Clara, I get paid the same amount of money. There's a lot of um, cyber generals, cyber senators, and cyber congressmen who... Oh, yes, there is the one cyber warrior. I forgot. Um, there, there seems to be a lot of this sort of cyber infection. And again, remember, I met my wife on IRC, and yes. I've only got three slides left. Uh, <clears throat> I wish that I was a cyber warrior. 
Uh, many people dress up like this on the weekend and be cyber warriors. I just want to be a, a, a helpful soul and um, work on this stuff. So I'm going to keep trying. And uh, we'll see you next year. We'll learn what happened. If you want to follow this amazing story, join us on Twitter, where you'll see me yell about crap. <laughs> and I did it. Uh, so it's almost as bad as our uh, security guard asleep here on the couch, and this one actually was not from the same bank, but it is also, ironically, from a bank. Okay. <laughs> all right. So we all know about tailgating, right? You wait for someone by the door, they open it up, and then you follow them in, right? Great. So we sit in the parking lot and uh, doing a physical assessment, sit in the parking lot, uh, do the, uh, you know, observe folks' badges so they know what they look like, spend about an hour, you know, looking at the door, observe patterns, you name it. And then we run into craft time because I don't have a badge. So I need to make one. So I sit in my truck with my Leatherman and a uh, CCDC piece of paper that I flip over and had stolen my daughter's box of 64 Crayola crayons earlier and uh, create a badge um, that looks really bad out of crayons and paper. <laughs> Enter craft time. <laughs> Yes, so fail number four. Uh, this works really great for aerospace contractors, and I spent an hour in the facility with this badge uh, after tailgating through the door. And uh, the only reason I got caught after an hour is I had entered a restricted manufacturing area and I didn't have safety glasses on. <laughs> so it turns out it even gets a little bit better because the first time I tried to tailgate someone in, I got denied. And I turned around and went back to my truck and waited another 20 minutes for someone else to come in. The first time I got denied, I was almost three hours from home. Uh, so it was a road trip for me for the day. And the first person I tried to tailgate recognized me. <laughs> <clears throat> Turns out, just down the street from our house, less than a two-minute drive, there's this little Greasy Spoon family-owned restaurant where we go to breakfast every Sunday. And, well, it's like four tables, and, well, I have a unique appearance, and our daughter practically runs the place. She goes behind the counter and takes orders, and she's four, so everybody recognizes her. And I show up, and who do I freaking try to tailgate into this office? Some woman that also goes to Little Greasy Spoon three hours away every Sunday for breakfast. <laughs> what luck. You know, I, I, I'm, I know that story's bullshit. They, they recognize you because you were wearing assless chaps, right? Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> All right. So also with this same uh, aerospace contractor um, manufacturing, uh, we had a 130% success rate on a social engineering attack that we did. Yes, I, 130%. I don't know if we can do math or not. I can. Right. So yeah, you send them an email, okay? Um, Send them an email with a link to a website. Say, hey, yeah, we have a, uh, um, an audit that we've just performed. We need to increase our password complexity requirements. Um, standard text email. Here's a link. Go to this website. Put in your username and password, and we'll tell you whether you're going to need your change your password to meet the new password complexity requirements. <laughs> Look, next. 100, 130% success rate, you say? Yes. They tried it more than once. <laughs> So let's coin a new term now yeah. and call it enthusiastically fished. Yes. <laughs> as, as Jaded would say, stop clicking shit. Premature <coughs> fissulation. What's that? Premature fissulation? Pre no. No. No, well, there was nothing premature about it. Uh, so in any case, the website that they go to is really bad. We steal their logo off of their website. And the, uh, the, um, this year we lost a very close family friend to pancreatic cancer. Um... And as you well know, we've lost a couple of other folks uh, this year, most notably recently uh, Sally Ride and uh, Steve Jobs, you know, whether you love them, hate them, whichever. Uh, but pancreatic cancer is a really big deal, uh, and it's uh, very underfunded for, uh, from government for research. Um, so go over to pancan.org and, and offer your support if that's what you're into. And uh, no more downers. Let's go have some fun. <clears throat> All right, so I've spent the last two years, uh, quote, in the trenches doing penetration testing, uh, vulnerability assessments, uh, physical assessments, all sorts of uh, good stuff. Uh, definitely related to my interests. So I thought about what am I going to do for the fail panel? I haven't done any research. Where did I find the fail? 
okay? So I remember this quote from Marcus Ranum, and you notice the little brackets around the quote, and basically the quote is summarized as, as an industry, security industry, we have everything we need to secure our systems, but we're just too damn lazy to do it, okay? Um, from Marcus Ranum, and uh, well, the first fail is, I can't find the goddamn quote anywhere. <laughs> Have you heard of Google? Yes, and I don't even really know what the quote is, so that's why it's summarized in brackets. But Marcus Ranum has this thought that, yeah, we have everything we need in the industry to secure our systems, we're just too damn lazy to do it. And I thought, well, all right, yeah. So I go do pen testing and all this type of stuff, and well, spend two years, and in two years, there's one customer that I haven't been able to break into. Okay, that's interesting. All right, so I'm gonna challenge Marcus to a duel. Okay, do we really have all we need or are we just really uh, too lazy to, to do it? Uh, I'd argue maybe a little bit otherwise. And I'm gonna show you some examples of some of the things that I've seen over the last couple of years um, that really make me question why. Okay, so fail number two, challenging Marcus Random. Okay, yeah, maybe not such a good idea. Okay, so ultra why, super why happy fun ball does not meet expectations. Hopefully this panel will. So first we need to get in, right? Okay. <coughs> Fail. All right, so before we can start doing the test, we need to get into the facility. Don't drop the soap. Okay, so step one. Let's say this is the door to your office, your corporate office uh, that you've used the shared entrance for the multi-tenant facility with no guard at the elevator and you come off the elevator and here's the front door to the office for a bank, corporate headquarters. That's a bank. That's a bank corporate headquarters. Yeah, lots of glass on the front door. Um, lots of nice padlocks from Home Depot, Schlage, thank you very much. Uh, lots of glass. Uh, there were no obvious cameras or alarms that I could see, so that one was really easy for us. By the way, these are all stuff from actual customers that I've been on in the last two years. Um, yeah, they don't know I'm telling you this stuff, but now if you can figure out who it is, it'll it, be a different story. Only it weren't re being recorded. It's okay. I don't mention any names. Nice. Misogyny Networks. Hold on a second. Because if you're going to do it, you should be honest. <laughs> Our ports are always... Because <laughs> our ports are always in promiscuous mode. <laughs> hey. I don't know. They didn't give me one. We gave you the pong. <laughs> he was last man standing. He's the interface that gets plumbed. We didn't have any children sizes. <laughs> How about gnome sizes? <laughs> <laughs> I have black cards for all of you. Actually, there was a computer motive for that. It kept his oh, pants yeah, we, on this. We had no pants. Yeah. <laughs> all I know is that Larry's wearing long sleeves. So, uh, <laughs> where does and the shirt end and where does the sleeve start? We, we wonder about that often with you, Larry. So who's next, by the way? Uh, who, who is volunteering to uh, follow up this illustrious move? Larry. 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 Yeah, Larry's next. That cable guy. <laughs> Obviously, you've never seen him naked. You know. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Either way. Oh, yes. Okay. I keep forgetting about that. There's a. Yeah. I keep forgetting about that. All right. Please bear with me for one second here. I need power badly. Is this called foreshadowing? Yes. <laughs> You're all right. 
That was Umbop by Hanson. What are you, a fucking mime? You wouldn't remember that, Gillis, because that was before you were born. Oh. Okay, now we're good. We're good. <laughs> there we go. Ooh, beer. Necessity for the presentation. All right. So welcome to uh, fail panel five. Put that there. Don't spill it on my laptop. Okay. And ooh, the sound of waffles. All right, so V for Vendetta. All right, my name is Larry Pesci. Um, I'm a senior security consultant with NWN Corporation. Uh, spent a long time in healthcare. Uh, did a lot of penetration testing, all that type of stuff nowadays. Um, authored a couple books with Singris and the co-host of Polycom Security Weekly. You don't care about that crap because, well, we're not here to talk about me. Um, I was er wearing earlier my Cancer Sucks t-shirt. Hey, cancer sucks. Thank you very much. Um, not funny, but don't worry, we're gonna not harsh your buzz. HTML formatting is all like web point five. Um, so about the only thing that's missing is the blink tag. It's really bad. Uh, and no and the matter blink the blink tag is coming back in HTML five. I know. Good. I'm excited. <coughs> so no matter what they put into the form, it says, you're great, no problem, thanks, and then we go use it for all sorts of other stuff. Um, the site looks really bad, and I want to show you what it looked like, but I forgot to get it and it requires some setup. Fail. So fail. So instead I'll offer you a consolation prize. So first up uh, is this fine gentleman, Chris John Riley, in Columbia, dancing with a woman. He's apparently a wingman. He looks just like that guy right there. Yeah, right there. So uh, Chris John Riley is playing wingman to distract this very, uh, very nice woman uh, away from uh, James Arlen, <laughs> who has apparently decided to uh, dance with what, what appears to be a very, well, young woman. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, James, it's Columbia. I mean, it, in it, defense, <laughs> I think you have bigger boobs than her. I, 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 I noticed that I still have the shirt on and somebody covered up out of modesty. Uh, so here's the thing. They brought in these championship dancers <laughs> to show us how to do this stuff. And they danced dancers. for about an hour on stage and then they started teaching us. You see what happens when you get a bunch of information security people and try to teach them how to dance? <laughs> Fail. It did not turn out well. I would like to point out, though, as one of the um, elders in that group uh, and the not grabby type of human being, um, we ended up having to dance a whole hell of a lot because some of the other speakers that went to Columbia were all hands. <laughs> Chris. Like this guy? Perhaps. 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 All right. So moving right along. Great. So we're in. We, you know, we've got access to the facility, right? So, so what happens from there? So normally when we start looking at assessments, we worry about shared use networking closets. Okay? And well, this is maybe not the shared use that we always see. Usually they're sharing network closets with uh, the phone guys or some storage or um, power and all that type of stuff. And well, that's one of the things that we call out on some audits because we don't like to see that. However, on this one, we saw something very interesting. This is a shared use uh, network closet that was shared with the pharmacy. <laughs> and you'll notice on the right hand side there's a set of metal shelves and there's some blue bins on the metal shelves. Yes, atropine. Speaking of atropine, uh, the default toppings on the waffles are going to be chocolate syrup, whipped cream, sprinkles, peanut butter, Reese's, bits. Uh, and atropine. <laughs> Uh, and or syrup and or strawberry and we don't have any forks. Are you using the... <laughs> I'm not quite sure why we would need them. Huh? You came to the right forks, place for that. Alright, so moving right along. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Drugs in the network closet. Awesome. Normally we worry about other stuff being in there and folks accessing that. No, we were concerned about the network folks accessing the drugs. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the first full day of DEF CON. Yeah. Yeah. This is the uh, fifth annual uh, fail panel. 
uh, momentarily there will be waffles. Uh, if you have a waffle, we do request that you please flip off whoever that was right over there. Uh, just under general principle. Um, we are requesting donations. Uh, the, the funds will be split between the EFF and cancer research and we'll go more into the cancer aspect later, uh, sadly. Um, that's a whole other set of fail that's not actually funny, sadly. Um, I'm David Mortman. We have our my illustrious panelists and our assistants on stage to uh, make a hopeful afternoon of fun and merriment. And uh, the way this pretty much goes is we, we make fun of industry, we make fun of each other, we make fun of you. It's all for a good time. Are you about to say something, Rich? No. No. My personal fail right there. Okay. So I'm going to start off with the, with, the least part, with, the, with the least funny part and then we'll get to the really funny stuff. Uh, and that is that, uh, so at uh, Field Panel 2, I made a big deal about the fact that there's a, way too much sexism in this industry and sadly that's not funny. Um, and this year there's been a tremendous, tremendous amount of stupid sexism going on in this industry. I'm not going to name names for the most part because really, <clears throat> that will be, that, that, but I'm going to make two exceptions because they're so recent. Uh, one is the uh, lovely folks at RSA decided that really it was necessary to bring uh, scantily clad booth babes to Black Hat. Um, and frankly, I just have to take a quick survey. Um, who decides what to, how to purchase their software? Do they base it on features, functionality, or the size of breasts? Breasts! Breasts! breasts. Fuck you. <laughs> Man breast. A good D cup will get me to buy anything. We, we will get to that. <laughs> so the other, the other special one which I just have to uh, thank uh, Imperva for throwing out this out at the last minute was they decided they were going to post a, a top ten list of pickup lines for Black Hat. Um, and it, it's embarrassing on many levels including the fact that they're not even remotely funny. Uh, and or good or accurate. Um, it was best summed up by a friend who called this a top ten ways of to never get laid at Black Hat. <laughs> I actually thought that Imperva had gotten owned and this was a, a, like a baggy pants thing. I thought it was hilarious. Oh. It, they did get owned. Sadly it was by their own employee thus proving that you do need to worry about the insider. <laughs> so. If only they had the LP. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. What's the D in DLP for? <laughs> so, uh, wait, first of all, are there children present? Are there any children? Are there people who act wait, like children? Are there people present? under the age of 18? Dave's looking for a date. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure I don't have to cuddle with Rich later in uh, the Las Vegas jail. You never cuddle. He, he never calls. I just he, wanted to be held. <laughs> yeah. So we, we, just, we decided, uh, Jack Daniel had the brilliant idea and we decided to support him in this, that, you know, if you're going to, you know, the way we, we have to do this right, if we're going to, you know, really be out here as an industry saying fuck you to women, we need to launch a new company. <laughs> 